Hey everybody, today's another video where I'll be bringing you along step by step as I build and expand here in the fish room. Today I'm going to Home Depot to get all the pieces that I need. In this video, we'll be going over in detail how I prep and treat the pieces of plywood that I use for each row on all of the racks. We'll be going over the plumbing for the overflow system as part of the auto water change system. And we'll also be going over the air pump and showing in detail how I supply air to all the tanks in the fish room. So let's get started. Back from Home Depot, got all the supplies that I need for today. We've got the corner molding, the outside corner molding uh, to make the tops along with the glass. We've got the two inch PVC for the overflow. And you'll notice that the plywood is actually much bigger than it should be. Normally at Home Depot, they have the giant machine where they cut it for you to size and I get it cut um, exactly to fit the shelving. But unfortunately, my Home Depot, that machine was broken and they had no idea when they were gonna have it fixed. I only have this weekend to do this, so I'm gonna try cutting it myself. I know I don't have the right tools for it, but we're gonna do it anyway and get it painted and stained and get all this done this weekend. Got the plywood set up on my little makeshift table here. It's just my ping pong table with some sheets to protect it. Not the best setup, but this is what I have. Now the appropriate tool for this would be a table saw. I don't have that, so I'm gonna be sticking to this jigsaw. Again, not ideal if you have a table saw or even better if you have Home Depot do it, that's the best way. This piece of plywood, I'm gonna put a picture of the actual barcode here so you can see which one I use. Um, you can just pick any plywood really. I just use it for the look and kind of just to evenly disperse the weight if there's any tank that's short too short from the stand, like a 10 gallon, if you're gonna put a 10 gallon on the, the new rack that I'm doing there. These are four by eights. So I'm just gonna cut about 72 inches long first, cause that's gonna fit the rack. And then I'll just cut that in half. So that'll make it 24 inches. And that'll give me the pieces I need for the rack. Got the worst part out of the way. The next step I'm gonna do is actually sand the edges, especially the ones that I just cut See, they're pretty rough. My unprofessional jigsaw, instead of just using a table saw, like I should have. It'll just smooth out all the edges. I would do this anyway, even if I got it from Home Depot, even with that nice clean cut. Still a little rough. Uh, I like to sand it and before I stain it. Testing out to see if the first one fits and looks like it does. Little trick that I did to kind of hide my imperfections and how I didn't cut exactly straight was just put those sides that I cut facing in the back and kind of in the corner so I won't even notice it. So this side is one of the outsides of that eight by four piece. So that's perfectly straight. I won't even notice, doesn't matter for me. But again, you know, if to do it right, I would have Home Depot do it or have a table saw. Now that I've got the three pieces that I need, I like to stain these guys with a waterproof stain really helps if you get any uh, dripping on it or if the tank leaks, uh, doesn't completely warp the wood. This is the one I use. There's the code there if you wanna look it up at Home Depot. Honestly, I just picked it because I like the color and that it said it was waterproofing. I'm sure you can use any other waterproofing stain. This is just the one I use. Got them all stained. Just wanted to make a note that I do with a roller get the front and sides as well. Don't really do the back just because I'd have to wait for it to dry, flip it, let it dry again. Um, kind of lazy like that, but I do it mostly this part for the look and I'm sure it's beneficial to have the stain in the front as well. Now that the wood is set up on each of the rows here, there's only one more thing I need to do before I could add some tanks and that's set up the overflow drainage. And what I use for that is a two inch PVC pipe I've seen in aquarium co-ops, uh, Corey's original fish room, he used ABS piping. I found that to be really heavy and much more expensive. This is a cheaper alternative. It was lighter, it's easier to hang up on the back of the racks and I haven't had a problem with it in the year that I've been doing it so far. And how I drill the holes into this is with this electric drill. And this bit here, I think is part of a hole saw. 
I told Home Depot what I needed to do and they gave me this piece. The tubing that I'm using is 5 8 diameter tubing. So this is just the next size up, so it's a nice snug fit. Just to give you a better idea what the end goal is, all these tanks are drilled. We have the overflow water going down, the tubing here, and you can see the bottom PVC tube there holds the tubing perfectly and all the water overflows and goes down into the sump and pumps outside. And all I do here is just make sure I have a good hold on the pipe here. And you're gonna expect some kickback, but I start off pretty slow and let the first bit there drill in. And then you're gonna have some kickback once this part starts making contact with the pipe. So just brace yourself for that. Make sure I'm in the middle. We do it. It's a little messy and a little rough so you can pick off um, some of the PVC pipe here and then what I do is just take some sandpaper and just make sure that it's smooth just so it's easier to put the tubing in and if I have to mess with anything back there I don't have to worry about getting a slight scratch or something from these pieces sticking out. Got the whole overflow drain set up all the holes drilled so we can start putting in some tanks now. The way I have it held up is just some bungee cords. Um, you can hang it however you want, you know, with zip ties or some kind of hook or something. Uh, bungee cords were just easy for me. I saw them at Home Depot, grabbed them. I have them holding up, you know, the overflows for all these tanks have the same exact setup. You can see it one right there. Works fine for me for the last year, no issues so far. And when you're setting up your incline to wherever you're draining the water, you just wanna make sure that you have two inches of incline per eight feet is what I've been told by contractors. Um, that's just for code and stuff, but um, it's code for a reason. So you get a good amount of drainage where you're not having water sit in the pipe. Uh, you know, if your incline, if it, if it was more flat, not as steep. So that incline seems to work really well. It gets the water out fast. We don't have water sitting in the pipe. I forgot there's one more thing that we have to set up before we can start adding tanks, and that's the air supply. So all the pieces that I got in my air pump came from gemco.com. They're the go-to place for building fish rooms. Their whole website, it's a little old looking, but they really know their stuff. There's a bunch of experts who work there. They help you through every fish room setup, no matter what it is. So I highly, highly recommend them. Going over these parts here, we have an air valve manifold with 20 outlets. We have the barbs here that connect to the tubing here that runs all the way through up to my air pump up there. We'll go there in a second. I used to do it where Gemco does sell these pieces separately and you can actually get your own PVC however long you want it. That's how I did this entire rack here. It's one long piece of PVC that I got myself and I drilled each barb individually. And that's how all this entire row is set up. Let me see if I can get back there to show you. So you can see I was able to customize the spacing all the way down. That's the one advantage to doing it this way, but it's much, much easier with the manifold. Here's the air pump that runs the entire fish room. I'm thinking after I add this rack, I'm going to have to upgrade, but so far this one has been running the fish room with extra air. I actually have a bleed off valve right now that I'll probably have to close. But you can see how it's connected there. That piece right there feeds the air supply coming in from the left. And you can see the barb attachment where it kind of splits. And this is kind of complicated looking, I know. Gemco actually helped me on the phone 
walk me through it, got all the pieces. I don't know what these pieces are called. I don't know anything about this and they help me every step of the way. So you can see going to the right, we have the individual valve method. And then coming this way with this tubing, we have the manifold method, which I think is a lot cleaner, a lot neater. This rack I had marked which tanks are what. I wish I did that with the original, but this is a lot cleaner. And pretty much what I end up doing is running the air tube down through to the next one. So we have the same manifold there and we're gonna add the other manifold right here. You can see that the manifold comes with these brackets that perfectly fit it. If you were hanging this up on drywall, that'd be perfect to just drill it in and it would hold it up well. Unfortunately for me, it's poured concrete, so I can't do that. So I just let it sit on top of the tanks. It doesn't really matter. Most of the hard work is done. Now comes the fun part where I'm gonna start adding the tanks. I have a whole video dedicated to how I hook up the overflow system, all the pieces I use, I'll link in the top right corner now. Hopefully this series helps you guys out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.